Hey guys, as you know, I'm a big advocate of therapy. If you don't, have you been listening? Um, there's this question I ask some of my guests who've been on the podcast. What misconceptions did you have about therapy going in? The reason I ask this is many many of us have misconceptions and by asking someone who's been there, my hope is that these misconceptions can be cleared up. Today I want to talk about misconceptions I had about therapy going in, which may be misconceptions you have about therapy. Also, if you haven't listened to the episode I did with Muho, who is a counseling psychologist, where we talked about what therapy is, start with that. It's episode 16, Crazy People Don't Go to Therapy. Hello there, and welcome to the Cocoa Butter Junkie Podcast. I'm Michelle, and this is my podcast. This is a podcast on the everyday reflections and experiences of a Kenyan woman. It is my examination of life living through mental health issues, grief, growing up, aka kicking and screaming into adulthood, the experiences of being a woman in Kenya, making friends as an adult, struggles with faith, and a bunch of other topics. Thank you for listening. In the episode, Muhu tells us first of all, crazy is not an appropriate term. So there's that. But also um, she says it's the self-aware that go to therapy. You realize you're not in a good place and you need help. That's self-awareness. Um, even if it was not your idea to go to therapy, on some level you must know that something is not quite right. And number two, your therapist will not tell on you. Um, they will not reveal what you've talked about. They are legally bound to keep everything confidential. The, the biggest misconception mm. is that, uh, one, your therapist is going to tell on your problem. The moment you walk into a therapy uh, session, I am legally bound by law to not disclose what you just said there. Mm. Unless you're a danger to yourself, as in you're extremely suicidal. Mm. In the episode, I will be listing a misconception and then um, hopefully debunking it. Um, it's a list that I will be going through. So I will list the misconception and then tell you about my experience of it. So continuing from where we left off, um, other misconceptions I had and you may have could be number one. You can make someone go to therapy. If they are a grown-up in their right mind, mostly, <laughs> if they're lucid and cognizant of what is happening, you can't. You can suggest it, you can pressure them, but unless they themselves see the need for it, and the problems they are in, or at least want to understand what, what is going on, you can't. The best you can do is suggest it and hope for the best. Misconception number two, therapy is not accessible. In the last episode, Muhu talked about uh, public hospitals that have a really good psychiatric and psychological care departments. I don't know if that's what they're called, but I think you get my point. Um, I would encourage you to visit a public hospital where you are, if anything, just for a referral. There's also the cost factor. It's expensive to see a psychiatrist, especially in a private clinic in Kenya. Psychologists will also charge you anywhere between 1000 and 5000 per visit. So yeah, it's not cheap. But as Muhu said, you have the option of public hospitals. And 
I've also recommended here this before, but there are also online services like Inuka and Mental360. I will leave a list of resources in the show notes if you're interested. And then if you have medical insurance, check if your provider will pay for your psychiatrist or psychologist's visit. I know there are not many, but just check. Uh, my point is therapy is available and accessible to you if you need it. Three, therapy is not for Africans, not for Christians, Muslims, Hindus. It's not for men or black people or whatever other group of people you're putting yourself in. Anyway, so um, as I said in episode three, growing up, I also thought therapy was only for white celebrities in the movies. Not that I thought that I, as a black African Kenyan woman, my brain was more resilient or whatever. It's just that I thought it was their culture and therapy was more accessible and available for them. Like in some way, my mental issues would be sorted somehow <laughs> by invoking my race or gender or faith. But then at the same time, I couldn't stop wishing that that sort of help was available for me. So if you're thinking that for some reason, because you're grouping yourself in some way that it's not for you, then that is a big misconception. Number four, therapy will solve all my problems or I just need someone to tell me what to do. When my brother died, I thought that going to a grief counselor will help to stop the pain, trauma, and shock that came with his death. And I think within a month, and looking back now, I see how crazy and unrealistic this was. Um, I'd looked for a counselor and made appointments for my parents. What ended up happening is I couldn't make them go. And I didn't even go for the grief counseling myself. I was so focused on making my parents feel okay immediately after losing a child. I thought that if they felt better, then I would be okay. And the way to that was counseling. So guys, no, unfortunately, therapy does not solve your problems. In fact, it's up to you to decide on how you will move forward. So in case you're wondering, counseling and therapy did not take away my grief or my trauma. When I finally started, um, therapy helped me understand how some things I was doing or how I had been reacting to situations was because of the trauma I experienced and because I was grieving. Um, it helped me understand that it's okay to grieve for my world to stop and it's okay for me to feel it. Misconception number five. I have to have all my issues in order to start therapy. The whole point of therapy is to know what these issues are. To know where you are, why, and then decide where you want to go and what you need to change to get there. It's someone listening to you with no judgment who helps you express yourself and challenge the way you think. Six, I can learn how to change other people by going to therapy. Mm, if anything, therapy will show you areas in your life that you need to work on. It's easy to think that a therapist will help you change the actions and behaviors of your partner friend, parents, siblings, or even children, they will not. What they will do is help you identify appropriate coping mechanisms that can help you in your relationships, but therapy at the end of the day is for the person receiving it. Seven, I don't need therapy if I'm not in a quote-unquote bad place. Therapy can also be for growth. I believe that we can always be better. A therapist can help you identify some self-defeating thoughts, patterns, actions, 
and coping mechanisms that are not serving you well. And then you can decide the best way forward. So you don't necessarily have to be depressed to see a psychologist. Misconception number eight, therapy will re-traumatize me or make me worse. So guys, I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist, but my advice would be trust the process. Therapy is tough and it may bring out some pain, but there's always a goal and an end to it. Sometimes it's difficult, but trust me, there's a light at the end of that tunnel. So <laughs> this point is full of cliches, but I hope you get my point. Number nine, just talking about my problems will not solve anything. True, but in my experience, there's this relief and catharsis that you get by just being heard, especially by someone who is patient, non-judgmental, and is on your side. Someone who is not just interested in asking you why you didn't handle things in a different way, but um, is actually invested in seeing you sort out your issues. 10. My support systems slash friends slash family are enough. I don't need more. Um, trust me, they are not. They are biased, um, have their own selfish interests, and are interested in giving you advice. Not that that's wrong, but it may not be what you need at the time. Plus, let's be real, family and friends can be judgmental. I may not really understand what you need as opposed to what they would do or would have done in your situation. And let's not forget that psychologists are actually trained on how to handle issues like depression, which your friends and family are not. Unless, of course, they are. <laughs> but you get the point, right? And even if they are trained, I don't know if it's okay for them to treat you. So basically, family and friend support is very good, but it's not therapy. And by 11, I don't want to be on medication. So Muhu and I talked about this in episode 16. So if you haven't listened to that, please do. But um, in my experience... It took several visits and tests before my psychiatrist got me on medication. It took several months and not just one visit. Me and my doctor talked a lot and he addressed my concerns about antidepressants. This is what I would advise. Talk to your doctor. I don't think you have to get on medication, but obviously this is different for everyone. Also, do your research. For me, YouTube was very useful. At the end of the day, a doctor cannot force medication on you. They certainly cannot force it down your throat. I talk about my experience with medication in episode 2. If you want to know more about my experience, that's the episode to listen to. Misconception number 12, you have to lie on a couch. I have personally never experienced this. <laughs> For me, it has always been um, the therapist sat on a chair facing me or behind a desk. Laying on a couch is something I've only seen on TV. I don't know. <laughs> if you're in therapy and you've experienced this, um, please let me know. Number 13, I will feel better immediately after one session or each session. Uh, no, you will not. <laughs> Especially not the first session. What I felt after my first session was more along the lines of hope. Feeling um, hopeful that I could finally understand what had been going on with me. I did not feel better. Therapy is a process. It takes time. It can be difficult and painful, uh, but again with the cliches, trust the process because that's what it is. 
a process. There's a storm, but there's also a calm. Your therapist will lead you there. And remember, you're not a machine that can be fixed in one go, and your therapist is not a mechanic. Number 14. Therapy ends after my sessions. Mm -mm, no, it doesn't. You have work to do. Whatever you learn in therapy, you have to implement in your real everyday life outside the therapy bubble. Your therapist will not change your patterns that are causing you harm. That's all you. If you have maladaptive coping mechanisms and you have learned what they are, the ball is in your court. In fact, sometimes you'll be asked to do homework, which we'll talk about in the next session. So you have work to do after each session. And then lastly, therapy is forever. Like Muhu said, there's a fixed number of sessions you have. I think she mentioned 20. But then you can still get psychosocial support afterwards if you need it. So no, therapy is not forever. Yeah. So like a normal basic session should be a minimum of five sessions, a maximum of 20. Unless we are talking about now that long-term therapy which we call now psychosocial support where you just give the, the client psychological support to deal with their social life and this can happen even once a month mm -hmm. so even when we say it's for life it's not like for life every day every day mm -hmm. yeah it could be like 12 times in a year Okay, guys, those are common misconceptions people have about therapy, some of which I've had myself, and I'm not saying that that is an exhaustive list, but I hope that clears up for you things that therapy will not do for you and any misconceptions you may have about therapy. And yes, even after knowing all of this, I'm still of the opinion that everyone can do with some therapy. I will put some resources for you in the show notes that you can access if you want. If you're a doctor offering mental health services and would like people to be able to reach you or you would like to clear up some issues concerning mental health, medication or therapy, please reach out to me. My email address is kukubatajunkie at gmail.com. I'm also looking to share your stories of mental health um, and experiences. If you're in therapy or have been and are currently processing or have processed an issue and you'd be happy to share that on the podcast, let me know. Again, the email address is kukubatajunkie at gmail.com. Guys, I would love to hear and share your stories, so please send them to me. This week's recommendation is just me wondering if you guys really listen to this segment. <laughs> and if any recommendation I have made has been of some use to you, please let me know. Send me a DM or something. I'm on email, Instagram, and Facebook. You can also leave me a voice message on anchor.fm slash messages slash junkie. So that's the episode. Thank you for listening and bye.